Shalom. Welcome to Rob on the Rock. I'm Rob Vanoff. And for this week's Torah portion, which is from Genesis 18 through 22, uh, we're looking at a fragment from Cave One at Qumran. And you can see it's highly fragmentary here. And sadly, the, the high-res image that is available online is fairly faded. We can see there's not a lot of contrast. But we're able to see what the text is, and, and we'll come back and look at the Hebrew. Basically, it's the section here from 22, 13 through 18. This is the only uh, section from Genesis 2 that we have from Qumran. We don't have, for example, the whole story of the Akedah surviving at Qumran. So it says, Then Abraham raised his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram, an ail, it is in Hebrew, caught in the thicket by its horns. And Abraham went and he took. And so you see where I have the bold here. That's uh, uh, the part we have in the fragment. And we'll look at that. Uh, he took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering in the place of his son. And Abraham named that place. And you see, I just have the end of Abraham highlighted because that's all we'll have in the text there above. Uh, the Lord will provide. Adonai yil'e, it says. As it says to this day, in the mountain of the Lord, it will be seen or provided, Yara'e in the Hebrew. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven, etc. And I have the rest of the scripture here just because it's such a beautiful passage of scripture reiterating what uh, Paul calls the gospel, which is this, in your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And of course, We've seen that already in Genesis 12 was the first utterance of that. But for our sake, since we're just looking at ancient Torah manuscripts, we're going to zero in on these verses from 13, 14, and 15 that are in bold here. And uh, the Hebrew is very lovely here. I believe this is a probably around the turn of the century uh, manuscript fragment here. Sadly, we don't have... The context, we don't know if this was a complete role of, of Genesis. Was it a, a larger Torah scroll? Was it just a small scroll that had just some sections of scripture on it? We don't know. But the first thing we see up here corresponds to where it says Abraham um, uh, Abraham saw and, and went and he took, is what it says. I don't need to scroll back, but basically what we see here is the end of the name Abraham. And I'll, I'll copy out what we have. We see the hay, and we see part of a mem, like this. And we can see several mems, right? We see a mem over here. We see a mem here. There's a mem. Th those are final mems. Obviously, we have a, a initial mem here, and we have an initial mem here. So we've got plenty of, of evidence of the mem on this page, both the regular form and the final form. This is going to be a resh, and we have a resh down here. And then um, we have a bet, presumably. There's no bet surviving, but it, that's what it would look like. And then an olive. And we, we have a few olives. Here's an olive. Here's an olive. Here's an olive. Here's a part of an olive. So we've got plenty of evidence of, of what the scribe wrote for an olive. And that's the name Avraham. So it'd be olive, bet, resh, hay, mem. And then we see this. And what this is, is the kuf. And then a chet. Vayikach, and he took. And the, the two yods look the same or sorry, the Vav and the Yod look the same. The two strokes look the same. That's what I meant to say. We have a Kuf right here. And was there another Kuf? Well, there's a partial Kuf. Vaikra. And that's what I say is right there, even though we don't actually have it. We know it was there. And that's the verb, and he took. Abraham went, Vayelech Avraham Vayikach. He took the aisle, the... the the ram. Okay, well, let's, now that we know what that is, that's from verse 13. Let's look at this next section here. Again, we have hay and a mem. 
Oh, guess what? That's going to be the same thing. I'm going to write Abraham backwards. That's Abraham again. And it, what the presumed verb lead up to that was something like this. Um, Vaigra. I'm trying to write it in the same scribal form. And Abraham called et. Here's our et. Notice the tav is not made like this, but like this. Et. And here's a shin that's hidden. Shem. Vaigra Avraham et shem hamakom. This is hey. There's a mem in here. Makom. And the, the mem would look something like these others. So I'm supplying the missing text. But this is from Genesis uh, 22:14. Vaikra Avraham et shem hamakom. Abraham named or called the name of the place, right? And then uh, it's Adonai Yireh, as we know. Here, it, it's not uh, sort of extant in the text. And that takes us to the last one, where it says uh, right here, I know there's a Vav and a Yod, Kuf, Resh, Aleph, that's Vaikra. In more careful Hebrew, it would look like this. Vaikra. Vaikra. What is this? This is Malak. There's a calf so feet. Malak Adonai. And the angel of the Lord, and the angel of Adonai called El. And see, we don't, we, we don't even have the full Aleph there, but we know it's a Lamed. The angel of the Lord called unto Abraham a second time from heaven. So let's, now, now that we see that here, I'm going to erase all my scribbles. And let's go back and just look at each letter. What, what do we know? Let's look at our Alephs. Let's do, go through the Aleph bet here. Well, we have an Aleph right here. We have an Aleph right here. And an Aleph here. And a partial Aleph here. So we've plenty of olives bets we don't have any attested bet uh, but we know there was one with the name abraham of course uh, gimel don't have a gimel here dalit no dalit that that survives here uh, hey well we have hey from avraham we have hey for hamakom the place we have another hey for avraham and we have two hays here for the tetragrammaton Notice here, in this uh, manuscript, the scribe saw no reason to write out the four letters of the Tetragrammaton in, you know, he didn't do this sort of thing, you know, where, where they do the, the Paleo-Hebrew um, kind of uh, approach, like we see in some of the scribal conventions at Qumran. We don't see that here. So there's our hay. And also notice it's very different than the hay we learn now in block. Like even up through the 9th, 10th century, the scribes were still writing hays that look close to a chet if you're not careful, if you don't know what to look for. How about a vav? Well, we see a vav here in the Tetragrammaton. We see a vav here for vayikach. Uh, and uh, I think that's it. So there's our vav. Um, no chets. No tets, yods are looking just like a vav. There's a yod, there's a yod. Um, I think that's it. A kaf, we only have a kaf sofit here. That's a kaf sofit. So two sofit letters then, kaf and mem. But before we get there, we kaf lamed. Lamed, we see, we see a lamed right here. Lamed. Mem, there's our mem, our open mem, but we also, as we pointed out, we have one, two, three, and that was it. Three clo closed mems. No noons, no somics, no ions, no pays, no tzadi. Kof, though, however, kof right here. And that's from Hamakon. Oh, I forgot, we had a mem right there. Open, I close open mem 
and then here top of a kuf for vayikra so two kufs resh right here one resh and then a partial resh for avraham sheen we have one here and then tav we have a nice clear tav right there so there you go we have a good portion of the letters of the hebrew alphabet here represented in a what i think is a really cool looking script from uh probably the early maybe late first century bc or or first century common era definitely it's a second temple text it's from genesis 22 again we're not sure if this was part of a whole uh, scroll of genesis or not but the text that survives there's nothing here that disagrees with uh, or is it is different than the later masoretic tradition so there you go this is from cave one at Qumran uh, from our weekly Torah portion. Shalom.